Thank you so much, Madam Chair. This year I introduced HR 153 with my colleague, uh, Representative Kana, regarding the need for the development of guidelines for the ethical development of AI. Uh, transparency in, ex in the of AI systems, processes, and, and what implications are a result of it, and helping to empower women in underrepresented or marginalized populations. Right now, we have the wild, wild west when it comes to AI. Um, artificial intelligence isn't the only emerging technologies that requires the development of ethical guidelines. The same discussion must be carried over to the use of facial recognition. I, uh, there was a, uh, a member who introduced a statement from the Detroit Police Department. So I represent a majority minority district in the city of Detroit is one of my cities. And approximately 67% of my constituents are minorities meaning the vast majority of my constituents have a higher likelihood of being misidentified by a system that was intended to increase security and reduce crime. Um, we, last month, NHTSA re um, released a study that facial recognition vendor test part three, which evaluated facial recognition algorithms provided by the industry to develop the accuracy of demographic groups. The report yielded there are higher rates of inaccuracies for minorities to Caucasians. Ms. Whitaker, you stated it. If, if we develop, when algorithms are developed and you do use a bias process, it is gonna give you a bias results. And one of the things with the, and we asked the question initially, what can we do? First of all, there should not be any American citizen who's under surveillance where it's not required that it is posted and identified and a place to contact that company to say, what are you using my image for? We in America have the right to know if we're under surveillance and what are you doing with it? Another thing, any release of data that you're gathering should be required to go through some type of process for the release of that. So I can't just put a camera up, gather information in facial and then sell it. We're having this conversation about the ring doorbell. We know that that is helping to get criminals, but if you're going to give the information from ring to the local police department, there should be some formal process of disclosure and inclusion to the public so that they know that's happening. Um, I'm very concerned about um, the movement of this technology. So some places have just said, we're not gonna use it. And we know this technology is here and is moving forward. Instead of just saying, don't use it, we need to be, as Congress, very proactive of setting ethical standards. Have an expectation that our public can say that if I'm being, if my image is being used, I know and I have a right to, what are my rights? And that's something that I feel strongly. Mr. Whitaker, in your opinion, with so many, var var I mean, I'm sorry, Ms. Whitaker, so many variations of accuracy in the technology, what can we do that will say that we will take out these biases? We know that there has not been the algorithms. Has been. What can we do as a Congress to ensure that we are stopping this? Thank you for the question. I think you know when we talk about this technology racing forward, I think it's, we have had an industry that has raced forward, selling these technologies, marketing these technologies, making claims to accuracy that end up not being totally accurate for everyone. What we have not seen is validation race forward. We have not seen public understanding and new mechanisms for real consent, not just uh, sort of notice equals consent. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to pause the technology and let the rest of it catch up so that we don't allow 
corporate, uh, corporate interests and corporate technology to race ahead, to be built into our core infrastructure without having put the safeguards in place. Now, the police chief in Detroit submitted a record, and I said this to him face to face, mm -hmm. and he made a promise that there will never be a trial in court based solely on facial recognition. There should be something in our civil rights law and our justice system that does not allow a person to be persecuted based on the fact that we know this data is not accurate and it has biases based on facial recognition. And that's something I think we as a Congress should do. Thank you, my time has expired. Mm -hmm.